Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be talking about regression diagnostics with stats models. Let's get started. So first off, let's go on and get uh, some data. And so import stats models.api uh, as SM. We're also going to import pandas as PD, import numpy as MP. Um, what else are we going to want in here? Um, let's also import, whoops. Um, import matplotlib.py plot as plt. You know what, let's go on up here and let's also get a couple other things going here. Um, we want something uh, from stats uh, models.compat uh, import lzip. Um, yeah, I think we'll need that as well. And then let's also go on and do uh, import stats models dot formula dot api as smf import stats models dot api uh, dot stats dot api as sms seems like a lot today but um i think i think it'll be uh, quite useful for us and we'll also um for our um for our usage here we'll also do matplotlib inline uh, and i will also zoom in a little bit here um, and let's see what we uh, stats models dot formula let me just do this whole thing again models dot formula dot api there we go all right and so uh, the next thing is again what I said was uh, let's actually load up uh, some data. So we're going to download the uh, Gary or Jerry data set um, uh, that we'll use here with the, um, his, some of the historical data. So let's have our uh, data is equal to, you know, we'll actually just do this as a data frame, is equal to uh, sm.datasets.get our data set here. And we'll do uh, the Gary or Jerry, however you want to say it. Uh, hist data dot data uh, data set okay and uh, once we have that data done um, let's go on and run a basic um, OLS model with that so let's do something like um, our results here so we'll want to go on and fit a model we've done this again uh, several times um, uh, throughout the series so far whoops uh, we want lottery here we want literacy plus our mp dot log of our uh, population and again that was for 1831 Uh, whoops. And then we also want in here what data is equal to df uh, dot fit. Let me unzoom. I think I'm a little big here. Uh, and what else do we want in here? Uh, whoops. And it's pop here. Uh, see what it's actually wanting here um, I have an extra or a missing let me double check here what I'm looking for we have mp.log now yeah, we got an extra one okay there we go so now let's go on and uh, again just take a look quickly at our our summary and again we see here r squared is not great um, but let's also maybe go on and talk a little bit about um, what type of of statistics we can kind of grab a hold of with this. So uh, one of the first ones that we really need to look at in here are some normality. Uh, so normality of uh, residuals. Uh, and specifically, the first one we'll look at is the Hark-Barra test. 
Okay, and that Harkbera test, so um, let's actually do name is equal to here, and we'll do something like um, uh, Hark uh, Barra. We also want uh, the chi squared. Um, and you know what? We'll do chi squared uh, to tail probability here. Uh, then we'll also, whoops. Uh, then we also are going to want in here um, skew, and we'll also grab in kurtosis. Uh, and then let's also go on and do something like um, our basic test in here. And this will be the uh, hark bearer. So sm dot uh, hark underscore bearer. And that's our results dot resid, because uh, again, we need the residuals for that. And we'll use this lzip that we had grabbed before, name with test. And so then here you can see we have this nice um, little uh, zip framework that we have here. And so here we have our Hark Barra, which is uh, 3.4. We have our Chi uh, squared to tail probability, which is 0.18. Uh, our skew, skew. Uh, uh, is in a negative uh, point five, let's say, and our kurtosis, which is three. Uh, let's also look at maybe some influence tests. And um, again, some of you may be saying, oh, well, what does all of this mean? Well, we'll go over all of these later on um, with more of our heavier stats series stuff. Right now, I'm just showing you guys how to run them. Um, and in, in future episodes, we'll actually go through and actually say, all right, here's how we calculate these. Here's what they actually mean, et cetera. Again, right now, we're just trying to run them, show you how to run diagnostics that you need. Okay, my, my expectation is that you guys already know what this stuff is a lot of the times. If you guys are coming here already, you guys have already taken your stats classes. Uh, so the next, next thing that we actually want in here uh, will be influence test. Okay, so um, here we're going to actually create up an influence object, okay? And this is gonna hold um, attributes and methods that are gonna allow us to access uh, the influence of each observation. So let's actually go on and uh, do this. So um, we'll do from stats models dot stats dot outliers influence. Okay, import in here, OLS influence. Um, and let's do something, uh, let me just run that for now. And we'll do a uh, test class is equal to OLS influence here with our results. And then we can look at our betas. Okay, um, and so in this instance, we would be looking at these uh, DF betas is actually what we're looking at here. And so we can do something like um, test class dot DF betas and let's say that we want to grab um, just these first five and we'll grab all of those okay and so then here you can actually see we have our actual betas here well oh, those that, that came out quite long but that's okay um, and again if you guys want to see and maybe look at some um, other some other uh, types of information, you can always look at the directory, okay, to actually see some more. Now, some useful information on uh, maybe leverage, okay, that we want to, to run, okay, because we do have our influence test, so then let's also maybe talk about leverage. So for that, we can actually do a plot. So we can do something like a from stats models dot graphics dot regression plots. Let's import in here a uh, uh, plot leverage. Uh, resid two. Okay, and so from this we can do something like fig axis is equal to plt dot subplots. Uh, we want our fig size in here to equal. I'm going to do ten by ten. Um, and then we also want in here our figure to equal uh, our plot leverage residuals two uh, with our results axis is equal to axis. And so we can see here, um, let me actually zoom out a bit here. 
Um, again, so here down here we actually have our normalized uh, residual squared. Here we actually have our leverage. Okay, and then again, we can also look at a lot of, there's a lot of other plotting options and I will go through uh, regression plotting probably in maybe two or three episodes. Okay, so stay tuned for those if you're interested. Um, the next type of statistic that we're probably going to want to uh, take a look at is going to be multicollinearity. Okay, uh, and this multicollinear, let me get this, move this down, there we go. Uh, multicollinearity, um, one of the easier ways to do this is just do MP dot linear algebra uh, with our con, uh, cond for our condition, and we'll do something from there. We'll do our results dot uh, model dot exog to grab our exogenous uh, uh, model results. Um, why didn't, oh, whoops, AL. There we go. And so here we can actually get our multicollinearity results here. Um, and again, we'll talk about these in turn when we start talking more about statistics and whatnot uh, later on in the series. Um, again, right now we're just looking at how to run them for those of you that just need to know how to run them. Next up, again, is gonna be one of our favorites is heteroscedasticity. Okay, and so from here, let's do something like name is equal to our Lagrange multiplier multiplier uh, stat uh, then we also have in here our p value uh, then we also have our f f value uh, then we also have in here our fp value uh, the test here is sms dot the hetero and then it's the uh, brush pagan test okay is what we're doing um, and I probably should have just wrote brush pagan but that's okay um, so uh, brush pagan pagan test so that's our results with our residuals then we need our results dot model dot our exogenous variables and then again we'll do this uh, l zip uh, name test and so here we have our Lagrange multiplier, we have our p-value, it is um, not significant here, um, our f-value, and then our um, f, not g-value, our f-p-value. And again, we see that neither one of them are significant, at least at that um, level, at the 5% level or anything else. And so um, let's do one more, and that's the Goldfield quant uh, test. Okay, and so that one would actually have an F statistic. Um, so name here is gonna be F stat, and then we'll, here we'll just have our P value. Uh, and then we'll do uh, test is equal to SMS dot, again, our heteroscedasticity, but it's the Goldfeld quant. Uh, results is our residuals, and then we have our results dot model dot Exog, uh, and then here L zip again with our name and our test. Uh, oh, and I wrote out all of results there instead of just res. There we go. And so again, we have our F stat uh, to stitch again here we would reject. Um, so now we also have our last one here would be uh, linearity. Okay, and we've already done uh, multi, -co uh, multi co linearity, but now we also have linearity. Okay, and then this is the Harvey Collier uh, multiplier test. Um, and so this one would be something like a name is equal to, um, here we'd have a T value, and here we'll have a P value. Uh, our test is equal to SMS dot uh, linear, and again, it's the Harvey Collier test with our results, and then we L zip in here, uh, name and test. So again, we have our uh, both of these, and again we uh, uh, we reject. Okay. So again, this was a really quick um, overview of some regression diagnostics that you can use with stats models. Um, again, later on in the series, probably much later on, we'll actually start talking about more of the statistics. Um, it doesn't seem to be that sexy of a way to talk about things for people. So again, this is just how to do the results. Um, they're diagnostics. Um, again, if you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button. And I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.